Today is the main day of the Chhat festival where the setting sun will be worshipped. Also in this edition of Kantipur News, we have updates about the concerning killings of rhinos, status of tourism and the final of the ICC Men's One Day International Cricket World Cup between India and Australia which is slated for this afternoon. Good morning, I'm Praram Vadahal. Let's begin with the main stories. Chhat festival being observed today by worshipping the setting sun, river banks and water bodies decorated across the country, festival to conclude by worshipping the rising sun tomorrow. Prime Minister Dahal hesitates to call the meeting of the Constitutional Council, appointment of seven justices of the Supreme Court and three constitutional positions stranded in absence of political consensus. 41 workers remain trapped in a collapsed road tunnel in northern India as a new drilling machine arrived on site to replace the damaged one. Rescue efforts paused because of exceptionally hard rock formation. And hosts India take on five-time champions Australia in the grand finale of the ICC Men's One Day International Cricket World Cup today. India seek immortal triumph, Aussies aim for record extension. Today is the main day of Chhat Festival as the setting sun will be worshipped later in the evening. River banks and water bodies across the country have been decorated after ensuring required sanitation for the main day of the Chhat Festival today. Chhat festival, which previously used to be observed only in the Tarai Modis region in the southern belt of the country, has gradually gained popularity and is observed throughout the country. Chhat festival concludes after worshipping the rising sun tomorrow morning. It is believed that fasting during the Chhat festival brings in good health and prosperity to the family members. Chhat festival is observed from Kartik Shukla Chaturdasi to Saptami by worshipping the Surya Dev or sun. A tourist from around the world come to Chitwan to see the endangered one-horned rhino. However, rhinos have been targeted by poachers more in recent time. Poachers have killed 183 rhinos in the past 25 years. This has raised questions on the role of the Chitwan National Park and the Nepal Army personnel who are deployed for the security of the national park. Employees of the Chitun National Park and a team of the Kharga Dal Battalion of the Nepal Army were on a regular patrolling of the National Park last Thursday afternoon. When they reached the core area of the National Park in East Chitwan Saura sector, they found two dead rhinos. The two rhinos were found with their horns cut off in the ditches dug by the poachers at a distance of around 100 meters apart. Poachers killing two rhinos just three kilometers away from the Superchuli security post clearly highlights the negligence of the Chitwan National Park Administration and the Nepal Army. The poachers killed 18-year-old and 6-year-old rhinos and ran off with their horns and hooves. The National Park Administration has informed that it has taken the incident seriously and search is underway for the poachers. Along with two rhinos killed, eight rhinos have died at the Chitwan National Park and mid-region this fiscal year because of various reasons. Meanwhile, 22 rhinos were killed during the last fiscal year, out of which two were electrocuted by the poachers. According to the Chitwan National Park Administration, 183 rhinos have been killed in the past 25 years. The highest number of rhinos were killed during the conflict period. According to the 2021 census, there were 752 rhinos in Nepal, out of which the highest number of 694 were in Chitwan. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. The question is, what should be done to control poaching? Your options are A. Strict legal actions, B. Arrange security, and C. Public awareness. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. In absence of political consensus, seven justices at the Supreme Court and officials at three constitutional commissions have yet to be appointed. While meeting of the Judicial Council is yet to be held for recommendation of justices at the Supreme Court, the Constitutional Council is also yet to hold meetings for required appointments at constitutional commissions. Positions including one commissioner at the Election Commission, a member at the National Natural Resources and Fiscal Commission, and the Auditor General are vacant. Meeting of the Council, Constitutional Council, in fact, chaired by the Prime Minister, must be held for recommendation in these positions. However, the Prime Minister is yet to call a meeting of the Council. Meanwhile, seven justices have yet to be appointed at the Supreme Court as the meeting of the Judicial Council remains to be held. Based on the existing provisions, the Supreme Court must have 21 justices, including the Chief Justice. 
With around 28,000 cases at the apex court, only 14 justices are operational at the moment. The Judicial Council is yet to set for a meeting because of the foreign visits of the Chief Justice and the Minister for Law. In such a situation, Minister for Law Dhanaraj Gurung has claimed that appointments at constitutional entities would soon be made on the basis of qualifications and capabilities and not the political share. The Constitutional Council includes Prime Minister, Chief Justice, Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives and leader of the main opposition party as its members. 32-year-old Subhas Shrestha of Sakhwa Bazar in Barabise Municipality 6, Sindhupalchuk, who had reached the United States of America illegally, has died while he was in detention. Shrestha, who had reached the United States through a group of human traffickers, had died on Monday afternoon last week while he was in the detention center at the immigration. The Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency has said that Shrestha had died while he was being detained at the Carnes County Immigration Processing Center in Texas. Shrestha used to operate a store at the Ranjana Complex in Kathmandu. He had opted to go to the United States due to the economic crisis in the country caused by the 2015 April earthquake and COVID pandemic. He had paid almost 8 million rupees to national and international agents and had left for the United States on the 24th of August. He had followed the illegal route to the United States through Turkey, Spain and Mexico. Nesvesta had reached Lukeville in Arizona of the United States from Mexico on the second week of the Nepali month of Osoj. His father, Kulbhadu, said that his family were unaware regarding how Shrestha had reached the United States. Shrestha had called his father on the 12th of this month and had informed him that he was in a good condition. He had informed his family that two other Nepali citizens had accompanied him during his journey to the United States. The Immigration Department of the U.S. had detained Shrestha upon his arrival and had moved him to the Cairns County Immigration Posting Center. Shrestha died there on the 9th of the 13th of November where preparations were being made to deport him to Nepal. Shrestha is survived by his wife and two children. The flow of domestic tourists during the festive season this year has been considered remarkable. The country witnesses around 30,000 to 35,000 domestic tourists each year. However, the government lacks proper data regarding this. The government and tourism entrepreneurs do not consider domestic visitors as tourists. However, they have been the biggest contributors in uplifting the tourism market in the country. Around 1 to 1.2 million international tourists visit Nepal annually, while the number of domestic tourists is projected at double or triple of that. Majority of the tourist destinations in the country had been visited by domestic tourists during the Dasai and Tiar festivals this year. But the government and other concerned entities do not have proper data. China has recorded 2.8 billion domestic tourists within the first six months of the ongoing year, while the country expects 5.5 billion domestic tourists by the end of this year. The Southern Neva has projected transactions of 5 trillion rupees from the domestic tourists. India had recorded 670 million domestic tourists in the year 2021, which had increased to 1.73 billion in 2022. According to a hotel in Nepal, 10 to 15 percent of the bookings are done by domestic tourists. Some hotels have reported up to 30 percent occupancy by domestic tourists as well. All three tiers of the government have been making pledges to promote domestic tourism. But they have failed to prepare required plans and policies in this regard. Domestic tourists say that development of infrastructures at tourism destinations must be equally prioritized. The government has not been able to ensure domestic tourism-friendly environment in the country. Domestic tourism can grow further by increasing the purchasing power of the people. In our Public Voice segment, we asked in several provinces regarding ways to complete the National Pride projects within the deadline. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. So I mean, budget day no part of that. Anu government pan nirantar gaya no part of that. You take a pornali lai. Kei parivartan gare ra. Chito druta gati ma kam hone baata pranse sirjana gaya no part. Labour aur le ramro sangale guare ka chhanu ki chaynan bade ra ramro sangale bian dekhi bedu ka sabne unar lai samay diye ra kam gare bane chhe uncha ala dosto mala laksa. Niyaman gare no pache ani jolly jima lega sa theke dar pache ani. त्यहाँ को संबंधित उपभोक्ता पनि सचेत हुनु पर्यो बजेट दिनु पर्छ र ठेकेदार ठेकेदारलाई चाहिँ आफ्नो अनुरूप मिलाएर काम गर्न पर्छ समयमा बजेट दिएर 
त्यो चाहिँ गम्भीर रूपमा त्यो कार्य सम्पन्न गर्नुपर्ने अनि मात्रै हुन्छ सरकारले ठेकेदारहरुलाई कडा भन्दा कडा निर्देशन दिएर कामको सुरुवात गर्नुपर्छ जति पनि घुसखोरीहरु छ त्यसलाई त्यो कार्य छिटो भन्दा छिटो कारबाही गर्ने Time now for the international news. Forty-one workers remain trapped in a collapsed road tunnel in northern India as a new drilling machine arrived on site to replace the damaged one. The nature of the exceptionally hard rock formation in the area, coupled with the clearing of debris, damaged the original machine and paused rescue efforts, according to the officials. This added a new challenge to the long-drawn rescue efforts. According to the National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited, one of the agencies overseeing the rescue, the number of trapped workers was also revised to 41 from 40. It said the construction company building the tunnel, Navayug Engineering Company Limited, came to know about this discrepancy on Friday. Yesterday, a team of experts held a meeting to also discuss other potential methods to rescue the trapped workers amid concerns that the drilling machine's high-intensity vibrations could cause more debris to fall and hinder their efforts. And dozens are dead and wounded after Israel's air force bombed the UN-operated Al Fakura school and later in the day attacked another shelter in Tal Al Zatar. Israel attacked the Al Fakura school in the Jabalia refugee camp followed by another attack on a second school in Tal Al Zatar. Both schools in northern Gaza were run by the UNWRA and were sheltering many people with reports of dozens killed. The UN run schools in northern Gaza house thousands of war displaced Palestinians. The head of the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, the UNRWA, condemned Israeli strikes on UN-run schools in northern Gaza, where displaced people have been sheltering. The statements from UN officials come after the health ministry in the Hamas-run Gaza Strip said that at least 50 people had been killed in a strike on a school in the Zabalia refugee camp. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of people have arrived in Jerusalem as part of a five-day march for the release of the hostages. Participants of the march said they were there to represent the Thai, Nepali, Filipino and other foreign nationals who were abducted by Hamas and added that it was imperative that all hostages be returned as one big group. According to Israeli authorities, Hamas militants abducted around 240 people from southern Israel on the 7th of October as well as killing around 1200. Among the estimated 20,000 demonstrators were family members of some of the hostages as well as their supporters. They conversed on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office in Jerusalem. Now, protesters gathered in Israel's coastal city of Tel Aviv yesterday evening calling for a ceasefire in the war in Gaza as the conflict enters its sixth week with no signs of stopping. Around 200 protesters, most of whom identified as being from Israel's leftist camp, gathered at a park at sunset, urging the government to opt for a peaceful solution as the situation for Gazans becomes increasingly dire in the strip. Since the deadly October 7 attack by Hamas militants, Israel has bombed to rubble much of the Gaza city, though enclaves urban heart ordered the depopulation of the northern half of the narrow strip and displaced around two-thirds of Gaza's 2.3 million Palestinians. Protesters in Madrid clashed with riot police late last night against an amnesty law which Spain's socialist decreed over Catalonia's 2017 separatist bid in order to form a government. The demonstration, the latest in a series of protests in cities across the country against the amnesty, took place two days after Spain's socialist prime minister Pedro Sanchez won a four-year term with the backing of Catalan and Basque nationalist parties in return for agreeing to the law. Sanchez has defended the law saying an amnesty would help to defuse tensions in Catalonia. In a survey by Metroscopia in mid of September, around 70% of respondents, 59% of them socialist supporters said they were against the idea of an amnesty. And now before we wrap up, here's a look into the top stories one more time. Chhot festival being observed today by worshiping the setting sun. Viva banks and water bodies decorated across the country. Festival to conclude by worshiping the rising sun tomorrow. Prime Minister Dahal hesitates to call a meeting of the Constitutional Council, appointment of seven justices of the Supreme Court and three constitutional positions stranded in absence of political consensus. 
41 workers remain trapped in a collapsed road tunnel in northern India as a new drilling machine arrived on site to replace the damaged one. Rescue efforts paused because of exceptionally hard rock formation. And hosts India take on five-time champions Australia in the grand finale of the ICC Men's One International Cricket World Cup today. India seek immortal triumph, Aussies aim for record extension. That is all for the moment. Our next English bulletin is at 6 p.m. Thank you for staying with us. Have a beautiful day ahead.